people didn't like to criticize her when she first emerged because they said, well, here's a schoolgirl who's autistic. I dare you to criticize her. I dare you. And I remember saying when she first emerged, like, what is this game? If I found a younger person who was more autistic and adored fossil fuels, and I put that person out there, would I win? <laughs> Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we're going to be checking out a video from Douglas Murray titled Ultimate Clash. Douglas Murray of the trade greater Tom Beg, the spoiled little woke brat. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. I mean, I said when she first emerged, um, people didn't like to criticize her when she first emerged because they said, well, here's a schoolgirl who's autistic. I dare you to criticize her. I dare you. And I remember saying when she first emerged, like, what is this game? If I found a younger person who was more autistic and adored fossil fuels and I put that person out there, would I win? <laughs> Okay, it was always a trap, the Greta Thunberg thing. Always a trap. Now she's of age, she's, she's an adult, so and it's easier to criticise her, or it should be. Now, you may be wondering, what is going on here? Did Douglas Murray just lambast mainstream media darling Greta Thunberg? Well, that's exactly right. But why? Let's go right to the beginning. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast and have this conversation is that you straddle a very interesting line since the October 7 massacre. You're a journalist. It is your job to report. You've interviewed the Prime Minister as well. But at the same time as a journalist, you're choosing to cover stories that the rest of the media isn't covering, to focus on certain issues like the Palestinian authorities, pay for slay mm -hmm. scheme that other media are overlooking, to bring voices that others aren't looking at. And so many people see you as, in some ways, not only a reporter who's covering Israel, but in some ways, our voice, or one of our voices in the world. Indeed, Douglas Murray's meteoric rise to a household name in Israel in the space of just a few months has been nothing short of remarkable. But then, Douglas doesn't really see his support of Israel as such a big deal. That said, you're about to see Douglas, first of all, offer his unwavering support to the Israeli cause yet again in their war against Hamas, while also lambasting truant school kids like Greta Thunberg. Stay with us. And that's really astonishing because, you know, over the last year in Israel, we had a year of very difficult political polarisation. Yeah, I heard felt about that. that. The whole country had gone mad. Mm. And then suddenly October 7 happened and we saw people covering up, denying Hamas's atrocities, mm. now in many cases, including senior UN officials, mm. or in fact, the whole UN mechanism, intervening to try to save Hamas's skin in the wake of mm. the massacre. And it feels that the whole world has gone mad. Does it look that way to you? Well, I think the world's been mad for years. Maybe it always, maybe it always was. <laughs> For those who do not know, October 7th, spoken of by the host, was when Hamas launched a surprise assault on Israel that killed 1,200 people. It was the single deadliest day for Israelis in history, prompting the deadly Israeli assault on Gaza. Air and ground assaults have killed tens of thousands of Palestinians, and the UN says more than two million people are living in, quote, appalling conditions. But let's get back to the debate. There seems to be some sort of episode happening mm. in the West right now. The mass protest that we are seeing against Israel in favor of the Houthis, even as they fire at British mm -hmm. targets and British ships. This total mobilization of parts of society against mm. Israel that lead many people in Israel and around the Jewish world to see it as profoundly anti-Semitic and Which not just is. a question of anti-Israel. And all around the world, Thousands and thousands of Muslims are going around in rallies and showing their support for Hamas. Many in Western countries are blocking the roads, burning and destroying any buildings that are owned by Jews or are supporting Israel, and they would also harass and threaten anyone who shows their support for Israel. And guess who has joined their ranks? None other than Greta Thurberg. Exactly. The Swedish environmental activist, whom we all know for challenging world leaders, to take immediate action to mitigate the effects of human-caused climate change. No climate justice on occupied land. 
I mean, what are they t- what are they talking about? How has the question of Israel come to claim such a massive role in these people's psyche that it defines not only how they see the Middle East, but informs how they view every other struggle in the world? I thought she was a climate activist. What the heck does she know about Israel and Gaza? Well, Douglas doesn't hold back in his response to the clip. Well, one thing is uh, era of profound stupidity. Um, in which, as I've said for many years, the adults have left the room. An example of the adults leaving the room is the idea that uh, a truant schoolgirl from Sweden should dictate global climate policy. Never seemed to me a good idea. Always seemed to me she should spend more time in school. And the fact that so many politicians bowed to her views on... I mean, I said when she first emerged... Indeed. Some of us held back from criticising Greta back then. People didn't like to criticise her when she first emerged because they said, well, here's a schoolgirl who's autistic. I dare you to criticise her. I dare you. And I remember saying when she first emerged, like, what is this game? If I found a younger person who was more autistic and adored fossil fuels and I put that person out there, would I win? (laughs) Okay, it was always a trap, the Greta Thunberg thing. Always a trap. Now she's of age, she's, she's an adult, so and it's easier to criticise her, or it should be. Um, it's always been a bad sign when things like that happen. Douglas is absolutely spot on. Greta Thunberg's action here is a display of either gross ignorance or a total lack of a moral compass, or even both. And yet I feel that it goes deeper than well, it does, but saying but, the world has always been no, mad, no, 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 the world but, has always been stupid. Something is happening now. No, 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 now. but a very specific thing. There are times, if, if, if you read an account of some, if a time in the Middle Ages where a, a young girl with blazing eyes came from a neighbouring village and told you all you were going to burn, you go, know, well, I mean, that, that's a strange sort of thing to happen. Well, here we are in the 21st century with exactly the same phenomenon. It's a very odd thing, this whole devolving of expertise um, and, 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 and what these people end up with. Now, Douglas drives home his point with this wonderful and well-fitting analogy. They, they're, the, the one, there's an analogy from Japanese culture, which is that if you're a warrior for a, um, a, a great leader in medieval Japan, um, and if your leader died, you would wander around the land looking for another person to affix your loyalty to. Yeah, that's what these people are. They, 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 believe, uh, they believe the earth is burning, uh, uh, climate emergency, climate emergency, uh, Palestinian emergency, this emergency. They're desperately, desperately searching for things to attach their, 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 themselves to. And there's... Well, who wouldn't agree with Douglas's point? If you have been following the trends, It does appear that Greta and her crew are desperate to jump on any bandwagon because her environmental stuff isn't getting her any more headlines at the moment. Another point on this, which is that these people are doing um, politics by just every issue. You can always tell somebody hasn't thought deeply about anything when they have completely predictable views on every single issue. If you'd have asked me five years ago, how do you think Greta Thunberg will end up on the Palestinian question, I'd have said, she'll end up exactly like that, because she'll get her politics a la carte. It's clear that mentally stable politicians use someone like Greta for the narrative that they want you and me to believe. Think about it. Supposedly educated people are using the mentally challenged to the benefit of their choice. It's pretty sad, isn't it? Why can't these people face facts with facts and not hype? Well, you can tell one thing by the manner of communication. And this is, if I can say, it's quite an important point. That manner of communication betrays something very interesting. That isn't argument, is it? What they're doing? No. Right. What is it? It's very performative. It's performative. What else? It's performative. It seems impulsive, emotional. It seems to come from the gut. I would say, it, it certainly doesn't come from the brain, um, it's, uh, it's a different form of communication from, for instance, the one we're having at the moment. Pay attention to this remarkable point Douglas is about to make. We are in, involved in a dialogue right now, and that's what most people I know, certainly everyone I respect, is able to engage in. If I just sat here and said, cease fire now, or whatever, just over and over again, you say, yeah, you said it once, I got it. 
Why do these people think if they keep bludgeoning people with their stupid, predictable, ill-informed opinions, that we're going to suddenly say, ah, now I get it, we should have a ceasefire, or whatever it is. Performative activism is definitely a thing nowadays. Many of these people know less than nothing about anything having to do with the Middle East, but they hate Jews and probably regret that they missed the entire Nazi experience during WW2. Now, they declare themselves pro-Palestinian and camp out on college campuses, disrupting life for everyone else. Whatever it is. I think oh, they're trying to apply amazing. political pressure, and if you put enough pressure and mobilise enough people, then that's how change is made. That's what they think. That's what is they think, and they may be right. They may be right. They may be right that people can be influenced by that form of communication. I personally think it's the worst possible form of communication because I don't think it is communication. It is a, a bludgeoning of people with very uh, of people by people who have a very very limited understanding of these things, and that is, by the way, one other giveaway of it. If they understood anything about this, you wouldn't just keep saying the same thing over and over. That's right. Douglas really hits the nail on the head there. You wouldn't decide every Saturday to just chant the same banality. If The reason they do it is because if you go underneath it, as you and I know from the people who go through the protests and ask any follow-on question, none of the marchers, almost none, would be able to answer a follow-on question. So they stick with the boring, ill-informed mantra and they hope that they will persuade us by it. And I hope that it doesn't work. Again. Most of these people know absolutely nothing about anything having to do with the Middle East. Our system precludes sending them to active war zones where they can protest local warlords for a big surprise involving the kinds of things warlords tend to do to ill-informed people who try to disrupt their lives. So, we're stuck having to send police to round them up and stuff them into cells, which exacerbates their rage and further intensifies their anti-Semitism. By the way, I think if that's anything, it's a silver lining that when you see people in the West chanting intifada, intifada, and everyone gets stressed saying these people are calling for suicide bombings on public transport, because that's what the intifada was in Israel. Yeah. Actually, the fact that they don't know what an intifada is, right. and they're operating out of, out of ignorance rather well, than malice, is comforting. Yeah, perhaps. absolutely. I mean, that, that is a striking thing as well. I mean, if I was to spend my Saturday chanting for something, I'd like to think that I'd know what the word meant. Like you'd think that would be a, a starting place. I mean, you get these people, who, they, they have their banners and then, you know, somebody says, uh, you know, what does the thing on your banner mean? And, oh, I don't know. Somebody just gave it to me. Now, that's really annoying, isn't it? Like, what, what kind of moron are you? I, would you or I spend our time walking around with banners some other guy we've never met gave us? Why? What's wrong with you people? Let's face it. The majority of these protesters other than actual Palestinians, couldn't find Israel or Palestine on an unmarked map if their lives depended on it. As for the university students, if they had any idea what the slogan they shout, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, actually meant they'd run from the demonstrations as fast as they could. Here's the full meaning. From the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, Palestine will be free of Jews. Those who say this are basically promoting and inciting genocide. And those students who would remain at protests after learning that they are no better than Hamas itself. Anyway, if an honest poll were taken of these protesters, the only ones who would actually want to go to Palestine would be either those hopelessly naive and ignorant or Islamic fanatics, since pretty much the whole Arab world hates the Palestinians as well. Now, let's continue the discussion in the comments section below. Wow, what an interesting video titled Ultimate Clash Douglas Murray of the Trade Greater Thornberg the Spoiled Little Walk Brats. Wow, you can tell based on Douglas' points, which I believe a lot of people engage uh, in the debates. Sorry, a lot of people engage in a rally, engage in a protest without even knowing what they are protesting for. Before you share your views or before you choose sides, you have to do your research. And when you get your point straight, you get your facts straight, you can decide to make a precise 
opinion about some certain issue. You don't have to just uh, decide to follow up a protest because you feel people are showing their support for some particular reason and you decide to join them to show your support. I believe that is totally unacceptable. If you want to give your comment on certain issue, there is a need for you to get full understanding. There is a need for you to do your research and find out the truth before you start choosing side or choosing who to support. We all understand the statement that last made that the elders have left the room. Now the children are the ones in the room. Because if you see right now, a lot of protests are going on in the Western world. A lot of people are showing their support for Hamas, showing their support for Gaza, showing their support for the Palestinian people. Because they feel Israel is playing victim. They feel a lot of children, a lot of civilians have been killed by the Israeli IDF soldiers. So as a result of that, they think Gaza, Hamas is on the right and Israel are doing the wrong thing. And if you look at the conflict very well, you understand that Israel are only trying to uh, defend themselves. They are trying to defend their people. And even currently right now, according to the information I got on Google, that Hamas killed a lot of uh, Israeli people as hostage, which they are failed to release. And if you ask me, why is it that uh, the people dying in uh, Palestine, people dying in Gaza, are more as compared to the people dying in Israel? I will tell you that the information they are given regards to the number of people dying in Gaza, dying in Palestine, are not true. Because the media are afraid to go to uh, those places. Probably they get their information from people that probably also work for uh Gaza work for Hamas, so most of the information we get on the media are not true. So Douglas himself have been to these places to get a first-hand information. That's the reason why he can give us his point, his fact, based on what he has experienced. And we all understand that, apart from we understand there have been a lot of missile release into Israel. Israel have also decided to defend their people by also releasing missile to attack Hamas, to attack uh, the terrorists, which the people who have been labeled as terrorists, which is Hamas. And as a result of that, a lot of people lose their life in Palestine, which I feel sorry for them. And I don't know how true this is, but from the information I've gotten online, before Israel releases a missile into Gaza, into Palestine, they always inform the civilian to evacuate those areas. That this day, this hour, this minute, a bomb or a, a missile is going to be released, kindly evacuate this area. I see no reason why a civilian would choose to remain in certain areas which he or she already knows a missile, a bomb will be released. So I feel Hamas in question are using the civilians as shield. Because if they are not using the civilians as shield, I see no reason why someone would decide to remain in a place that a missile is going to be launched. That is totally, totally unacceptable. And Israel is also investing in building bunkers in order to be able to shield their people. So when a missile, a bomb is released into Israel, the civilian can get a place to shield herself from the attack. But Hamas is not doing the same thing. And the people of Gaza, the people of Palestine, voted Hamas into power because they believe Hamas would help to restore peace. But when Hamas came into power, he did something opposite to that. He killed and silenced all the opposition. Ever since then, even the peace agreement that was signed between Gaza and Israel, when Hamas came into power, they violated that agreement by attacking Israel. And as a result of that, a lot of life have been lost. I, for one, I believe Hamas is not only causing harm to the people of Israel, Hamas is also causing harm to the people of Gaza, to the people of Palestine at large, which 
is an issue that needs to be addressed. And I really feel if there's a way the international community can come in to facilitate a two-state solution in order to be able to resolve this conflict, because a lot of life have been lost. And I've really learned a lot hearing Douglas speak. As we all know, Douglas always stands for the truth. He's not afraid to say the truth. So I would love to hear your comments. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Yeah. yeah.